morning, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're really excited to talk to you today about youth mental health and well-being. Um, I'm Barbara Jeffrey. I'm a partner with McKinsey uh, in London, and I'm also a partner with McKinsey Health Institute. The McKinsey Health Institute is a non-profit generating entity within McKinsey, and we focus on generating cutting-edge uh, research and health, but also on moving outcomes. And our mission is to add years to life, but also life to years. And what we want to do is add six years of higher quality, more meaningful, longer life for every person on the planet over the next decade. That's 45 billion years collectively. We recognize, <laughs> thank you. We recognize that's a really uh, strong ambition and we see mental health as a really core part of achieving that mission. And I'm very honored and excited to be one of the leaders of our mental health initiative within uh, MHI. However, I am no longer young, so I am joined by one of our wonderful colleagues from MHI, Leah Aurora. Leah, over to you. Thank you, Barbara. Good morning, everyone. My name is Leah Aurora. I'm a fellow from MHI and very passionate about mental health. So one particular area we view as essential to our mission is youth mental health. We've launched two surveys this year to understand how addressing youth mental health is key to adding years to life and life to years, and how we, as a generation, can make a difference in doing so. Thank you, Leah. So we're talking about youth mental health today, and we wanted to engage you as the audience and make this an interactive session. So we wanted to get your views on what aspects of health are most important to you. So please follow the instructions on the screen. It should generate a word cloud, which we'll come back to and we'll discuss in a moment. Whilst we're waiting for that to generate, uh, Leah, over to you to talk a little bit about the survey. You mentioned it before. Can you tell us a little bit more about the survey? Sure. In the survey we launched last May, we surveyed 10 European countries, gathering over 10,000 responses from people aged 18 to 90 on the subject of health. So at MHI, we define health through four dimensions physical, mental, social, and spiritual, as in the sense of having a strong purpose. All four dimensions are essential in achieving high quality of life, and so the survey asks questions related to each of these, as well as questions related to effects of social media, effects of global current events, access to care, among others. Great, and can you tell us a little bit more about the results and what we found? Sure. What really stood out to us is that compared to millennials, to Gen X, and to baby boomers, more respondents aged 18 to 24, so what we defined as Gen Z, reported poor health across the spiritual, social, and especially mental health dimensions. And that really surprised me that those three factors stood out so strongly compared to physical health. Yes, and that was also surprising to us. And it gets even more interesting once we start to dig into the data related to mental health. So about one in five youth reported poor or very poor mental health, and about one in four said that their mental health has gotten worse during the last three years. So these findings were actually consistent with a similar survey we ran in the US where about one in four youth reported being emotionally unwell. So as the mother of two children, I personally find this really distressing, actually. Yes, and unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. According to the World Health Organization, 75% of mental illnesses appear by age 24. People with serious mental illness have an average lifespan of about between 10 to 25 years shorter than those who don't. And mental illness already accounts for 14% of the global burden of disease. So youth reporting such high level of mental distress is definitely worrisome. And the need to address youth mental health is growing. Yeah, it's clearly a really important issue. It looks like our word cloud is not populating, um, <laughs> but um, that's fine, we can keep going. Um, and you can tell us a little bit more um, about um, some of the factors behind uh, the research that we found and what's driving some of the results that we're seeing. Yes, well, we're living through a time of unprecedented global crisis, be it the COVID-19 pandemic, global climate change, or the war in Ukraine. And the data from the survey seems to indicate that these might be exacerbating the level of distress, especially in younger generation. However, European Gen Z also mentioned technology and social media, as well as work and career, as factors that are negatively impacting their mental health. But what's inspiring is the emphasis that youth are putting on access to mental health resources. So about two-thirds of them said that mental health resources 
are important or very important in selecting your future employer. That is expiring and it is becoming a factor. People are actually choosing their employer based on uh, their research around uh, mental health and what they're doing. Yes. And so it's even more important as Gen Z is going to account for 30% of the global workforce by 2030. So I know, Barbara, you've been looking into that. Could you please tell us more about your survey on employee mental health and well-being? Sure. So we have done a huge amount of research um, post-COVID, actually, on um, employers across the world. And workplace was a massive factor in actually driving employee mental health and well-being. So our survey covered 15,000 employees and 1,000 employers um, across 15 countries, which represented about 70%. Um, of the global population. And the findings were really clear. Unfortunately, we found uh, post-pandemic that one in four employees around the world was suffering symptoms of burnout. And I personally found that really shocking and a much higher number than we expected. Also, when we looked at the overall outcomes, so we measured eight outcomes, four uh, business outcomes and four health outcomes. And what was very clear um, within that, we looked at both positive and negative outcomes. But of the negative outcomes, it was really driven by just three factors. The first, by far, was toxic workplace behavior, and that drove about 60 to 70% of the variance that we saw in the negative outcomes. The other two were inclusivity and a sense of belonging, mm -hmm. and also sustainable workload. So the findings were really clear. It was pretty consistent across the globe, and also, we saw that across all sizes of companies, whether you're a startup or a big multinational. Great, very interesting. And so, what can we do about it? So, we outline eight areas uh, in the paper, um, including leadership attention, freedom from stigma. Um, we are going to try and generate a second workout, but the results of the first <laughs> one has come up. So, let me just uh, see what that says. Interestingly enough, um, some of the factors that we already talked about, so stress, balance, accountability, uh, workload. Fantastic. Well, we would love to build on this. Um, clearly, it feels like um, there's a lot here that we would like employers to know about mental health. So one of the things that we have talked about with um, employers is the need to move away from focusing on the individual to a much more systemic view. So the good news is, is that employers are really listening. They want to take action. Four out of five HR leaders now say this is top of the agenda post-COVID. Um, but what we have also found is a lot of the interventions are really focused on the individual as opposed to the system. And as highlighted by our research, a lot of the factors behind this are actually systemic. So we're encouraging employers, as well as focusing on providing support and access to the individual, to also support uh, things like reducing toxic workplace behavior, making workplaces more inclusive, more sustainable, uh, also uh, creating more balance. I saw balance as one of the words that came up, more flexibility in the way that we work. So that's really uh, what we are uh, trying to focus on uh, with employers. I think two things really give me hope. One is, Employers are really listening. They really want to fix this pro uh, problem. Post-COVID, there's a huge appetite to do this. The second is everyone in this room. It has um, become a huge issue for many people um, of this generation. And you have the power to change it. You are the future leaders um, in your organizations. And so many of the ideas that you came up with around balance, stress, flexibility, we would really encourage you to start that conversation with your, your employers. Um, also, you're the leaders of organizations as well within your organization and start that movement and get the conversation going because people want to talk about it and employers are desperate to take action.